What's good? Welcome to Ari Roars. This is Ari speaking. Thank you for watching this video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some lessons that I learned in traffic. From driving, from riding, from being a pedestrian, being in traffic in general. I've always wanted to share these types of things with people, but it seems so like specific that I can't just randomly bring it up in conversation. And I thought, why not share these revelations on YouTube? This is the place to do something like that. And what I've realized more than anything is that there is a correlation between what's going on in your heart and in your mind and what's going on when you're in the car driving, specifically from the perspective of the driver. So that's basically what I want to get into. If that sounds like something that interests you, then just keep on watching. Haters imitators and complainers, men, they all the same. Hard to win the match when being players of a lawless game. Trying to shake the ground so they can't help except to call. So I'm going to be talking about the three major correlations that I've noticed on the road. So with each of these, I actually have three different categories, like a red means stop, yellow means slow down, green means go type of arrangement, except they're not really like ranked that way. There's really like one good one and two outliers. <laughs> the first one is a correlation between pace and patience. So when it comes to pace, I'm literally talking about how fast you're going in relation to the speed limit. A legally average paced driver, let's say going five above or below at the maximum distance away from the speed limit, they're at peace with the present, they're confident, they're not comparing themselves to other people on the road or in life in general. They're really just content with where they are and they're okay with their progress. They know that they're going to get there eventually. Now a person who goes significantly below the speed limit I can't be the only one who is extremely frustrated by these type of people. And typically the people who are going below the speed limit are either learning how to drive or they're like old and can't really see that well or maybe have some type of disability. There's usually a specific reason why someone would go slower than the speed limit. And sometimes those reasons do associate with what I'm about to say, but more than anything, I'm really talking about the people outside of that. You already know how to drive. You don't really have any type of disability that impairs you while driving, but you go slow anyways. And the reason is because you're fearful. You're avoidant of the future. You don't want to get there. You're afraid of what's going to happen next. You're very anxious and generally lacking in confidence. Man, I don't really want to like sit here and just read people because I feel like the way that I've structured this video is more so like a direct this is what it means if and it's not really solution based and I don't really want it to be that way but what I will say is that pretty much everything I'm talking about in this video and the issues behind them I've covered in other videos and will continue to do so so just let this be an informative video helping you to recognize what's going on inside of you now moving on to the third type of pace is a super speeder right now I can totally relate to this I am inherently a super speeder when I'm not in my best mindset. And these people are competitive. These people are selfishly ambitious at times. I remember one time I was on the highway, like I was traveling, I think it was like a five hour trip. And for approximately three of those hours, two of those hours maybe, I was racing someone on the highway. I kid you not, we were, it wasn't like a, high speed race because there was a lot of traffic but there was this kind of like secret competition going on like i want to be ahead of you and it went on for hours y'all this competitiveness why it just comes with impatience it comes with a little bit of bottled up anger and selfish ambition just me wanting to win me wanting to do better than the next person not really anything to gain in the end because ultimately we weren't even going to the same place you know what i mean at some point there was no winner because I went that way, they went this way. So the super speeder is pretty much aimlessly competitive. So my second correlation comes with reaction and peace, inner peace. The calm person is content in all circumstances. You know, someone cuts them off and they're like, oh wow, at least there was enough space in front of me for them to get in there without me hitting them. You know, there's not like a frustration or irritation behind it. Or maybe just coming with the awareness that someone probably needed to get somewhere real quick. If someone's yelling at you, flipping you off on the highway, maybe you're like, oh, they probably had a bad day. Now, second is a person who has a lot of complaints. You know, they're not making a big fuss towards the person. They're not like being aggressive on the road. But everything that's ringing off in their head while they're driving is a complaint. Why is this person in front of me going so slow? 
Oh my gosh, the light be red every time I get over here. Why are you in this lane? You're so stupid. Get to the next lane, duh. It's just like little things that like you find irritating and you're just complaining about them but not actually doing anything about it. And this is the type of person who just doesn't really find the gratitude in their daily life. They don't find things to be grateful for and ultimately they're a little distracted about things that don't really matter so much. Like notice the things that I mentioned just don't really matter that much. I'm sure they could bother you a lot, especially if you are having a bad day, but it's just a minuscule moment in your life. So it shouldn't be that deep. And the third type of reaction, we all saw it coming, is the road rage folk. Gotta be honest, I've never fully understood it, but we're gonna talk about it today. <laughs> Because let's be honest, there are reasons to get upset or angry at someone on the road, but road rage people just look for it. They want to get angry on the road and they want to get really aggressive. One time I was in an Uber and I guess some guy got mad at the Uber driver and like he pulled over and got out the car and it was in the middle of the night and he was like ready to fight or something. And I was like, oh, hell no, nah. like <laughs> drop me off at the next. And this type of attitude comes with a sense of entitlement. You're prideful. You expect people to do what you think they would do and when they don't, you get angry. And usually this comes from a place of bitterness and resentment in your heart that you've been holding on to. I talk about this in my Heal From Heartbreak video if you wanna work on that. But that pride is really driving you to just kind of force people to start acting differently or make people feel your anger so that they feel shameful for what they've done. It's just like you want to blame everybody else for everything and it could be their fault or you could just be projecting a little bit as well because most of the time the issues that happen on the road are just communication issues just like in life in general or at least from person to person not like all of our issues but issues with other people are usually like some kind of communication issue is involved and the third correlation i find with consistency and security inner security the person that consistently drives the same way, always, this person is secure in themselves. They're secure in their abilities. They're confident in all their ways. They're confident in every environment, in every circumstance. There's nothing that could really shake them and make them act like someone other than themselves. Now, someone who drives differently with different passengers usually thinks that they have something to prove. They just don't think that they are enough. These people may fear vulnerability, fear authenticity, something along those lines. They just don't want to reveal all of the deepest innermost parts of themselves. Whoever they are in private, they don't want to show their passengers, all of their passengers that. Maybe one passenger gets in, the next passenger doesn't. And then we have a group of people who drive differently based on the circumstances. For example, they drive differently when there's a cop around versus when there's not. Now this person is easily compromised. They're not standing firmly on their morals, their values, their approach to life. If things change around them, they're changing right along with it. Their identity is molded to whatever situation they're in. Now, obviously, like I said, there are still circumstances where these things might not apply. For example, if you usually have road rage and you're like cussing people out out the window and flipping people off and all that, but now you have like a five-year-old in the back seat, you're probably gonna pull back a little bit because you don't wanna offend a child or cause them to hear these words, right? But when it comes to cops, like if you were to drive fast usually, but then there's a cop around, so you slow down, that does say something about your character. Because the thing about me is I used to generally sit around 10 miles above the speed limit. And when cops were around, I did not change it. I did not give a shit. <laughs> I just kept going. That's not me encouraging you to go do that. I'm just saying this wasn't my area of issue. My area of issue was patience and I wasn't gonna change that in any circumstance. I was always gonna be impatient. <laughs> but if I cared a little bit more about the circumstances and cared a little bit more about the fact that in certain circumstances, you know, this wasn't gonna be appropriate, I probably would have bent towards my morals and increased in my values in order to do something that a cop would approve of and continue to do that even when the cop is not around. Now, ultimately, there's so many things you can learn from traffic and from being a driver. I feel like our true authentic selves are exposed to ourselves when we're driving. I hope that this has been interesting and kind of entertaining a little bit, but also informative for anyone watching. But that's it. That's all I got for you. If you liked it, then like it, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Sussing on these hoes, yeah, I'm 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 sussing
Sometimes I'm awesome.